All right, everybody, what is going on? Welcome into another episode of the Full Press Sense Podcast, of course, part of the Full Press Coverage Network. It is Alec and Dayton here once again to talk some New Orleans Saints. Uh, continuing our roster projection series, we've done the quarterbacks, we've done the running backs and fullbacks. Now, now it's time to what should be the most fun and, or not fun, uh, intriguing, debatable position group, especially with the news of Mike Thomas. And if you haven't listened to the last episode yet, please do. Uh, we rant about this, how the Saints goofed it up here. Um, and I talk about how trash our receiving room is. And uh, as you can imagine, I'm going to do the same thing here. Because they deserve it. It's trash. So, uh, Dade, how how the heck are you today? I'm I'm just uh, watching our sponsorship chances go away with how much you're pissing on the face of this wide receiver core. The, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. You, rightfully, <laughs> you 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 you're hitting it spot on. I mean, this this is going to be tough to talk about. Yeah. You're you were right with the first word though. Even though this is not a good wide receiver core, this is still going to be fun to talk about because it's, I mean, sure, cause, it's like because everybody has different assumptions on who makes the roster. Right? It's like watching the car accident. It's like you don't want to watch. You have to. And I mean, sometimes it can be fun. This it looks is, cool. This is one of the things that's going to be fun. I mean, as long as nobody's hurt in that car accident, of course. What of I'm course. Talking about, of course. Um, but yeah, no. I mean, I, I'm doing great still. Reveling in this Michael Thomas news, just just unprecedented stuff happening to the Saints. And of course, it happens to the Saints. Why yep. why wouldn't it happen to any other team? So exactly. So uh, of course, these Saints released Emmanuel Sanders this off season to get under the cap, so he's no longer here. Uh, they drafted Kwan Baker in the seventh round of uh, this year's draft. Uh, they have Mike Thomas. They have Marquez Callaway, uh, Traquan Smith, Jawan Johnson, Jake. Uh, Lamp Man. Uh, so let's talk about this wide receiver group real quick. We know, <laughs> well, at least we think Mike Thomas is going to play at some point this year, so his spot is safe. Um, I'm assuming we're also on board with Traquan Smith's job being safe, right? Yes. Yes. Um, Deontay Harris is making your roster. I'm assuming. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have our th- we have our three. Uh, Marquez Callaway makes your roster. I think so. I th- I think he's a lock at this point. I mean, yeah. he started a couple games last year. Yeah, you can't get worse. Can't, yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. can't, can't get worse, right? Cannot get worse. No. <laughs> no. So we have our four, right? I, I think those are the four everybody thinks are going to make the roster. So now it gets interesting. Where do you? What, what's the path you see? How many receivers do they keep? And who do you have making uh, your initial 53-man roster? So, for those of you that didn't listen, first off, go listen to the episode. I'm sure you guys already know the news. But, of course, Michael Thomas will be out for a significant amount of time, anywhere between, you know, a couple months in the year to possibly the entire season. We'll see uh, what happens. So, team will be without Michael Thomas, but he makes the roster. Yeah, I think you're right. Smith, Harris, Callaway, got to be guys who make it. Now, Juwan Johnson is a guy who has been recently moved to tight end, as far as I'm concerned, even though he's still listed as a wide receiver on the depth chart, at least according to OurLads.com. I like Juwan Johnson anywhere you put him, tight end. I mean, he's got the size for a tight end. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson has been comparing him to Megatron, though, none other than Calvin Johnson, which I really like that. I mean, I I like that he's saying that, obviously, Juwan Johnson is doing impressive things in camp to get any sort of comparison like that. So I'm excited to see him, and you touched on it in the last episode when you talked about this wide receiver core. It's not that it's just filled with a bunch of scrubs. It's just filled with a bunch of guys if we don't know they're really scrubs or not. These are just a lot of unproven and, like you said too, undrafted guys. I mean, Callaway is undrafted. Um, Deontay Harris was undrafted. Juwan Johnson was undrafted. Jay Glantman was undrafted. Um, and Quan Baker was probably going to be undrafted. Saints obviously drafted him in the seventh round, but pretty darn close to being undrafted. So just wide receiver room filled of unproven guys. And I think Juwan Johnson is the guy that needs to go out there and prove himself because he's up there with Low Jordan Humphrey, guys who have been in the Saints system before. They have a feeling of the playbook, of the organization, and w- what they're expecting, what their role is. But they really haven't done much. Obviously, Juwan Johnson was caught up from the practice squad for a few games last season. Um, and then Lil Jordan Humphrey, another 
um, undrafted free agent who has just kind of bounced around between practice squad and Saints team. So, you know, they're they're essentially both Austin Carr's in the situation, if you want to compare it to anything, because Austin Carr went through that quite a bit, and they're kind of starting down that. But this is now an opportunity with Michael Thomas out for these guys to seriously, A, make the roster, and B, get playing time. Now, mm-hmm. Juwan Johnson, big body guy, could definitely be a red zone threat. Low Jordan Humphrey is, is a good route runner, also got good size to him. But neither of these of these guys, and same with Traquan Smith and Marquez Callaway, have the route running, separation, and yards after catch ability that Michael Thomas has. Mm-hmm. And a lot of guys, obviously, in the NFL don't come close to Michael Thomas either. But the fact that the Saints don't even have kind of like a prototype kind of wide receiver opposite Michael Thomas. They're all projects. Which, which is why I really would have loved to see, you know, like Rashad Bateman on this team. I see a lot of Michael Thomas and Rashad Bateman in terms of the route running ability, the way he catches and runs with the ball. You know, that would have been great to kind of fill this, but the team doesn't really have a guy with that set prototype that can fill that role even right away because you're right. These are, these are project guys. We don't fully know what we're getting. We, we kind of know what their strengths and weaknesses are, but we don't fully know now. Deontay Harris, he's a guy that you could put in the slot. Trey Cohen Smith is a guy you, you can also put in the slot. You need big body outside receivers. So that's why I think Juwan Johns could definitely be one of those guys opposite Marcus Calloway. Low Jordan Humphrey, I mean, I just need to see more out of him. I think the only other lock for this roster, wide receiver wise, now he could definitely go practice squad. But I think Juan Baker is a lock for this wide receiver core, and I say that because I think the Saints see a lot in him. He's a six foot one playmaker, which is what they love. Um, again, he's he's not going to fill any of the shoes of Michael Thomas. He's not really like that, but he's a decent route runner, especially in short space and around the line of scrimmage. Um, decent hands, and he's coming from a small school where he was asked to do just about everything, including block, which the Saints love to have a wide receiver who can who can block well for them. So I think Quan Baker has all the tools to make this roster right away, and I think the Saints will want to do that with you know the only wide receiver they drafted. I think that they they at least want to give him a chance on the roster. So um, other than that, I don't see any locks. I want to say Juwan Johnson's a lock. But they've been trying to move him to tight end. Tight end group is kind of um, oversaturated right now at the moment. If he impresses, he could definitely try to get that that third spot. Um, but, you know, Garrett Griffin hasn't been part of the team for a long time. He provides a lot of value to the tight end position for the team. It's tough. So I think the only other lock besides Thomas, Smith, Harris, and Callaway is Quan Baker. I might be a little crazy for saying that, but... And I like his game a lot, too. I, I would love to see Quan Baker. I'll, I'll get a Quan Baker jersey if he makes the team. <laughs> I will not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I do agree. I think uh, just because, uh, I mean, look, if I look at this depth chart, I think the four, Mike Thomas, Trey Quan, Deontay, Mark Wes are set in stone. I would like to think... K1 Baker, as you said, I think he is a lock just because he offers something different that Juwan Johnson and Little Jordan Humphrey just simply don't. And that's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the shiftiness, the agility, um, the ability to run block. Just being a smaller receiver, I think that will help K1 Baker a lot compared to Humphrey and Johnson, who are both towering guys who are more of your jump ball, red zone threat type guys. Right. And I just got to think last year, um, you know, last year when Mike Thomas got hurt and Manny Sanders had COVID, uh, you know, the one guy that kept bringing up to the, to the roster was Jawan Johnson. It was not little Jordan Humphrey, not until later in the year when they were really, when they were really bad at wide receiver. Um, so I kind of got to think I th- just based on that alone, I would assume Jawan Johnson has the edge and also, you can put Juwan has the flexibility to learn and play some tight end, kind of like a situation. A player reminds me of uh, being in Dallas. Look at the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Noah Brown, the receiver they have out of Ohio State, they drafted a couple of years. I think it was 2016 with Zeke, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. A big body wide receiver, and the Cowboys use Noah Brown. He is, they keep him on their roster as a wide receiver, but he basically comes in and blocks as a tight end. He'll, he'll come, he'll line up wide and they'll motion him closer to the line of scrimmage. He just blocks, like, almost every time. Right. 
and is a bigger body guy who does get some looks in the red zone. Now, is it possible to think Jawan Johnson or Little John Humphrey could do that? Yeah, sure. I think it's possible. And, you know, with the reports circulating that Jawan Johnson is learning some tight end, we're going to think he simply has the edge with versatility over, over Little Jordan Humphrey and anybody else for that matter. So I have to keep in six being the four that we agreed on that K1 Baker. And I do see them keeping Jawan Johnson as a, as a wide receiver or, you know, a flex tight end blocking mm-hmm. receiver, if you will. <clears throat> I, I would love that. I, I really like Jawan Johnson, obviously university of Oregon guy. So he, you know, I got a little bias towards him, but He's a solid player, um, and yeah, Quan Baker, his playmaking ability will will get him good. But yeah, Jawan Johnson, you're right. He definitely has an edge over a lot of these guys. The one guy we haven't talked about who's on this wide receiver depth chart is Jalen McCleskey, uh, who was an undrafted free agent signed by none other than the Dirty Birds, the Atlanta Falcons. He was waived, and then the uh, Saints got him. Played uh, college ball for Tulane. Very small guy. five foot nine, 152 pounds. Um, so, you know, he's kind of a, if you had to compare to him, him, anybody on the roster, obviously he's going to be closest to Deontay Harris. Mm -hmm. Um, doesn't mean that his game is like him, but, uh, very interesting, uh, option there could, could be a guy who could make some noise, but I don't see him making it. Jake Lantman, same thing. Jake Lantman has good size to him. Um, so I really think it's down. Oh, and also Aesop Winston Jr., um, so I, I, I think really is going to come down to Michael Thomas, Traquan Smith, Marcus Calloway, Deontay Harris, Juwan Johnson, Lil Jordan Humphrey, Quan Baker. That's seven receivers right there. Saints typically carry five to six. Um, if they want to carry the seven with the Michael Thomas news, that would be pretty smart. If they want to go out and sign somebody who I'm sure please, we'll get right into. Please, please, exactly. please sign which, someone. Which a guy I really like, and I mentioned this in the last episode, Golden Tate, a guy who can create separation He's got good yard after catch ability. Now, obviously, he's in his golden years. He's he's in the twilight of his career, um, but he still showed out for the Giants when a lot of people thought that you know he, he just kind of wasn't going to do much in that offense. But still able to show his ability. He's still quick and fast for his age. Um, and again, he's 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 got the skill set that most of the receivers outside of Mike Thomas on this roster do not have. So I wouldn't mind that. But there are a lot of options out there for, for free agency. If the Saints wanted to go that direction, which who knows? At that, you know, you'd think that they would have already done that by now, right? Since they've known <laughs> since June? I'm so confused by all this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some notable names we mentioned in the last episode. Uh, but we'll dive a little more in depth with some of these guys who are free agents still. Uh, you mentioned Golden Tate, which is a guy you're very high on. Larry Fitzgerald has not decided on whether he's retiring or playing or not. Um, he would be a real good veteran fit for that locker room and kind of teach some of these younger guys how to really play the position. Uh, Danny Amendola, former Saint, great Des Bryant. Uh, Josh Gordon, yeah. who actually reapplied, yeah. <laughs> he actually applied for reinstatement. So we'll see if the NFL will allow Josh Gordon uh, back in the league. Uh, Josh Doxson, who was a former first round pick. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, who is. He has visited with the Vikings, and he's going to visit with the Seahawks. Um, he could maybe be, be a guy maybe you want to bring in. Um, and those are all the real notable proven veterans on the market. So besides Golden Take, let me pick your brain. Who else do you like? You know, I actually really like Josh Gordon. I always have liked him. Again, big question mark with everything that's gone on. And, and I'm not talking about his... <clears throat> Substance. I'm actually talking about his, his <laughs> time on the field because you know he 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 provided good depth for the Seahawks, but you know didn't do too much outside of that. <clears throat> he is, I think he's like 32, 33. He, he's definitely not the guy he was back in 2012 when he led the league in, he in is, receiving yards. Uh, I just saw uh, 30. Oh, wow, okay, Young, younger than I was, because I was thinking, you know, nine, it's been nine years, so he had to have been, like, right around maybe 23, 24. So that means that he was 21 years old when he led the league in, or, so, yeah, nine years ago, yeah, so he was, he was 21 and he, when he, he led the league just, in. And he just turned 30 in April, too. Just turned 30 in April, yeah. yeah. So, this guy's, that, that's actually incredible, so, um, I would love to give Josh Gordon a look. Larry Fitzgerald, obviously, would, uh, that guy would have the best hands on the team outside of Michael Thomas, no doubt about it. Hey, in all seriousness, um, he may be almost 40, but he's still probably the best receiver yes. on this roster. Yes. 
He, yeah, I think that he would be. Yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. He still has great route running ability, can run well. But again, he hasn't announced his retirement or not. We don't know yet. Which makes me think. So is he? It's, so he's he's a free agent. Free agent, right? Yes, Larry he's is. No yeah. longer on the Cardinals. No, he is a free agent. Very interesting. Um, yeah, I would definitely take a flyer out on him. So yeah, Golden Tate, Josh Gordon, Larry Fitzgerald. Those are my favorite guys. I I would love to look at Kenny Stills, but again, he's he's mainly a vertical threat. He has been dinged up fairly often in his career as well with the uh, Texans um, and Dolphins. Uh, he was part of the Larry Laramie Tunsil trade. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those are really the only guys that I would give serious looks into. But, I mean, I'm down to bring anybody in at this point. If I'm the Saints. I mean, come on. you, you got to figure <laughs> something out. Unless, unless they're really optimistic about Michael Thomas' recovery and they think that he will be good to go when the season starts, which – that's the case he's not going to be 100 percent. so i i don't know why they're ban- even banking on that so yeah um <laughs> nonetheless this is going to be a very interesting season for the wide receivers um i mean look uh, just looking on paper I'm, I'm looking i just looked up the uh the nfl's uh wide receiver depth charts just mm-hmm. just to see how bad it is do you make count how many teams I would take over New Orleans right now? Probably 31, I'm guessing. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, they do it. So AFC first. Well, uh, Balt- I take Baltimore's depth over near the Saints. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I t- Baltimore's cornerback mm-hmm. depth as well. Blows true. the Saints out of the Very water. Very true. Uh, the Bills, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bengals, yes. Yes. The Browns, yes. Mm-hmm. The Broncos, yes. Mm-hmm. Um... Chiefs, yes. Chiefs, yes. The Colts. Chargers. Colts, Colts yes. Jag- Colts, Colts. I mean, who do the Colts? The Colts. Colts might be the the most questionable one, eh? Yeah, but they're. I like, like. I like their top four better than our top four. Who's their number one? Uh, they have Ty. Ty. Michael Pittman. Paris Campbell. Zach Pascal. Yeah, I mean that's 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 better than ours, but that's 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 close. That's close. Yeah. One, uh, the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. The Chargers, as you just mentioned, maybe the maybe the Raiders. I wouldn't take. I mean, I take. I I, I would. T- yeah, that's right. Because they just have Henry Ruggs and nobody else. Ty- Hunter Renfro. Tyro- oh, Renfro, of course. Yeah. Was, was, so you got two short, fast guys. You got three short, fast guys. John Brown. You got four short, <laughs> fast guys. Yeah. I mean, they're decent. They're decent. Yeah. Obviously, don't get me wrong. I'd probably take that over what we have to, but. You you gotta have some sort of variety, right? Right. Uh, the Dolphins. I take the Dolphins. Yes. Um, Especially with Jalen Waddle. I take Jalen Waddle by himself over any of any, <laughs> our entire receiving core outside of Michael Thomas. Uh, uh, just the the point is, like, in the the NFC, and here's the other thing: if the Saints are gonna make a playoff push, you know, yeah. in December, or January, um, they got to get better at the water super position because look at the teams. Look at the teams that you would assume that make the playoffs. Right. The yes. Cardinals, I would assume, are in contention. The Cowboys. Yep. The Packers. At the moment, the Packers. Buccaneers. That could easily change. Uh, the Rams. Buc- Buccaneers got a the great Buccaneers. wide receiver core. Rams have a fan- have always had a fantastic wide receiving core. Um, the Seahawks. Yep. The 49ers. Yeah, and the, and the 49ers have some unproven guys because I mean, their number one receiver is Debo Samuel, and then they got Brandon Ayuk. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, they, they, they have young guys who still have some to prove, but they've at least done enough in the NFL to where we can go, yeah, that's a that's a decent, good wide receiver. Like, you yeah, can't like, say that with the Saints. Nope. Uh, the, even Washington. Yeah, well, Washington football team with Scary Terry. Yep. Um, and didn't, didn't they just draft somebody, too? They signed Curtis Samuel. Signed Curtis Samuel. That's yeah. right. Yes, yes. Panthers have a great wide receiver core yep. too. Yep. DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall. Yep. Uh, I think in all seriousness, the only team in the NFC I would not take over New Orleans is, is probably Detroit. Right, because Detroit really just said Tyra Williams. Tyra yes. Williams, Bashar Perriman. Number one. Yeah. O- outside yeah. of outside of Detroit, and that's saying something because we saw how poor Detroit is built. Right. Maybe Philly yeah. too. Maybe Philly. Maybe Philly, right? They just they just don't draft well with receivers. Now, yeah. I love Donovan Smith, but again, hasn't played a snap in the NFL. 
And the guy that you drafted the year before him that you also had to spend a first-round pick on, Jalen Rager, is, you know, very unproven still. And then J.J. Arcega-Whiteside might not even make the team this year, and he was a second-round pick. That's my biggest draft whiff of all time, J.J. Arcega-Whiteside. Yep. I really thought dude was going to be next, like, Megatron. I was, you know, <laughs> up there with those 50-50 guys. But, yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough for yeah. Saints wide so... receiver core. I mean, look. This is a this is a very poor wide receiver core. Damn near one of the worst in football. So, mm-hmm. um, really quick before we wrap this one up here, today and just run through your projected wide receiver uh, roster one more time for the listeners. So I think that we can all agree that Michael Thomas, Traquan Smith, Deontay Harris, Marquez Calloway, those four guys are going to make the roster. And the more that we talk about it, the more, yeah, I want to say Juwan Johnson is just about a lock to make this roster, but it just, it, the uncertainty around what position he's going to play, what he can fully bring to the table, just makes me question whether they will just want to keep him on the practice squad or not, which is also what I'm thinking a little bit for Kawan Baker. But the reason I think Baker is the other lock, the fifth lock for me, is just because of his playmaking ability, the fact that they just recently did draft him. Um, and he provides great separation in space and bubble screen, short yardage kind of potential for the team. Now, one thing I do want to say that I think those those are my only five locks right now. I would love to say Juwan Johnson is the sixth. I just can't say that right now. Ask me again in a couple of weeks once training camp kind of gets going and we get some reports out. I think a guy who can actually play a lot of snaps at wide receiver, and we, we, we've seen it before, you just don't see it too often, but a guy, I think that a guy who could get just a lot of looks and might be a reason why they're not signing anybody. Not not Taysom Hill, which we said that in the last episode. I think that he could also, and you mentioned <laughs> that he could play wide receiver. I think Alvin Kamara could play wide receiver. Oh, yeah. Inside, outside, whatever you want. So I think that he could play a Ty lot Montgomery. of snaps. Oh, and Ty Montgomery, of course, yeah. Listed as a running back, of course, started his career as a wide receiver. So there, you got two guys on there, and if and if Montgomery makes the team, there you go. You can just use him as a wide receiver too. Still doesn't solve the problem. I think Alvin Kamara is the guy who will solve most of the Michael Thomas problems, but he still doesn't have nearly anywhere the route running skills that Michael Thomas has, and the separation based off of Michael Thomas's strength and you know his quick feet. That is also unmatched by anybody. But I could definitely see Kamara do it. But I, I only got the five locks. Right now, I want to say Johnson has a six. I just can't yet. Not yet. That's fair. Um, I guess to wrap this up, I will go with uh, Mike Thomas, Traquan, Deontay, Callaway, Baker. I- I'll give Johnson. I'm going I'm to keep six. I'll keep Jawan One of Johnson us has to, right? a- yeah. as the uh, wide receiver slash tight end hybrid blocking I, I could see go. I could see them keeping Jawan Jawan Johnson for that purpose. It's gonna be a really <laughs> and, and uh, give me one free agent you'd like to see the Saints sign in the wake of this Mike Thomas news. Uh, I would have been crazy saying this a couple years ago, but I think it's the smartest move. Golden Tate. Golden Tate. Okay. Yes. I, I dig it. I'll go with Josh Gordon. I still feel like I he, like it. I think he just it's Josh Gordon, and weed is mm-hmm. no longer a problem in the NFL, so he can he can he can play. Yep, yep. I like that, too. Yeah, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, guys, don't forget, listen to our last episode as we rant about Mike Thomas and the Saints and just how rough it is being a Saints fan. On top of the other suspensions and potential suspensions that happened, or could happen, um, follow us on Twitter at SaintsFPC. And we really appreciate you guys listening. Uh, interact with us. Do not be afraid to. We love interaction. Uh, any last words here, Dave, before we sign off? No, follow us on Twitter at Saints FPC, um, and then I'm at Dayton underscore Brown underscore Alec. You can just just search Al's Toy Barn, and you will he, find me. He will pop up. You will but, find uh, me. No, thanks for listening to today's episode, and obviously be sure to check out the latest one as well, the one right before this that goes over the latest Saints news as well. But yeah, uh, pain. I'm excited to talk more about Saints training camp. Some of the battles will be seen, but yep. I'm ready for the season to be here, so let's get it going. Yep. Even without Michael Thomas, it's still going to be fun. Yeah, can I wait for week one when it's Jordan Love and Marquez Valdez <laughs> scandling against Jameis Winston and uh, Traquan Smith? Smith. Yeah. Yep. 
And then Jordan Love's going to go for it. Jordan Love's going to pop off for 390, four touchdowns, no picks on us. And, you know, hey, it's written. And we we'll also might be without Marshawn Lattimore. So. Yep. So that's going to be lots of fun. But that's going to wrap up this episode, guys. Uh, next week or next time, we will discuss the offensive line uh, depth chart and what we think, who makes the, the uh, 53 for the linemen. So that's going to wrap up another great episode of the Full Press Saints podcast, a part of the Full Press Coverage Network. Appreciate you guys. Y'all stay safe. And see you guys soon.